So here's my favorite part. Without further delay, I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Derek Cabrera. I know none of the other speakers will take offense when I tell you he's my favorite speaker of the day. My colleague and husband, Derek, has a fascinating background, including climbing many of the world's highest mountains, starting an orphanage in Nigeria, coaching our nine-year-old basketball team, raising two teenage daughters in today's world. And that is all in addition to his impressive scholarly, scholarly accomplishments. There's a lot to Derek, but underlying everything that he does is an, is an abiding commitment to make the world a better place by democratizing systems thinking. So without further delay, Derek Cabrera. Thank you. The mic was on, yes. We now live in a VUCA world, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. This world is exponentially faster, more interconnected, inundated with information, and problems are just more wicked. In this new world, we need to understand and model complexity, account for unintended consequences, think in terms of nonlinear webs of causality. We need to be agile and adaptive, but also quicker because this VUCA world has increased the speed with which decision makers need to act. At its core, systems thinking tries to address the mismatch between real world systems and how we think about those systems. We are inundated with information, but information is not enough to make actionable meaning. How we structure information, our mental models, how we think, creates actionable meaning. So reflect a moment on all of that. Not only is this world more VUCA, the systems are more complex, the problems more wicked, but the way we think about all these systems is increasingly out of date. This mismatch compounds these problems. It exacerbates them, magnifies them. So systems thinking is uniquely suited to problem solving in this VUCA world because its focus is on mental models. It speaks to the structuring of information in order to make sense of it. It asks us to think differently to pay particular attention to our own cognitive biases, to think in terms of fundamental patterns of organization, systemic interdependence, webs of causality, and multiple perspectives, and to question our imposed or traditional boundaries or constraints. At the same time that systems thinking can best address these VUCA world problems, it has suffered its own sort of internal problem, which until remedied will make it uh, difficult for broader application. So today I'm here to discuss this remedy and this requires me to go into a, a brief synopsis of the, the history of the field. So when I began to study uh, systems thinking more than 20 years ago, I started with the same question that most folks have, which is what is systems thinking? And it turns out that this is not as easy a question as one might want to believe. I found a fractured field that lacked a shared definition of itself. And other than the sort of general, we, we all study systems. I was met with a panoply of specialized definitions corresponding with systems thinking silos. So how did we get here as a field? Well, we can trace systems thinking back to von Bertalanffy's general systems theory in the 1940s. Um, but also we can go further back to uh, Aristotle in terms of its philosophical roots or even Lao Tzu. Prominent schools of system thinking include cybernetics in the 1950s and system dynamics in, with Jay Forrester at MIT in the 1960s. And system dynamics was introduced to a broader public audience in 1990 by Jay Forrester's student, Peter Senge, in his book on learning organizations, The Fifth Discipline. 
Yet while this captured the popularized uh, history of the field, it omitted an equally important number of methods and frameworks in a dynamic and evolving field. So we can more fully summarize the development of, of this field by demarcating these four historical waves, with the fourth wave emerging in the last decade right here at Cornell University. In the broadest terms, the first wave introduced hard systems, expert systems, technical systems, and mostly quantitative methodologies for analyzing very large systems. In the second wave, scholars reacted to what they saw in the first wave, to what they perceived as a failure to account for wider social context and participation of multiple stakeholders. And they focused more on qualitative analysis, collaboration, and even participatory methods. The third wave came along, and we tend to call that critical systems thinking. And that eschewed the paradigm war that, that was started between the first two waves in favor of theoretical and methodological pluralism, while incorporating also the study of power relations. So they brought power relations into the fold. So while this third wave, by enhancing plurality of methods and theories and approaches, addressed the fracture between wave one and two, it, uh, it also created more problems. And while universality was long aspired to by the general systems thinkers, um, for example, in practice, we really resorted or settled on pluralism. And although necessary, this pluralism left systems thinking with a chronic and continually wandering or worsening problem. The demarcation, the growth, and the fortification of silos and subspecialties. This makes it extremely difficult for scholars and practitioners to advance systems thinking as a field. So how, how can we attract fresh minds to a field that behaves more like 100 squabbling tribes? Newcomers are often drawn to systems thinking to gain a deeper understanding of the nature of complex problems and systems, only to be met with a litany of specialized methods and frameworks each one of which requires uh, them to subscribe to a certain orthodoxy or to adopt certain or master certain techniques that may be irrelevant to the problems or systems that they're studying. So these problems are rectified somewhat in the fourth wave, which marks a new era in systems thinking. This new wave resulted from the discovery that systems thinking is an emergent property of or an outcome of uh, the operation of four distinct cognitive patterns. And these patterns are called DSRP, which is just an acronym for distinctions, systems, relationships, and perspectives. So drawing from the work in, in cognitive sciences, DSRP redresses the longstanding problem or imbalance between the systems and the thinking part of systems thinking. And at its root, DSRP is at the root of all mental activity. The mind makes distinctions between and among things. It organizes things into part-whole groupings. It relates things, makes relationships between things. And it does all this from various different perspectives. While the four patterns are very simple, the brain executes them simultaneously, fixing and matching to create intricate patterns of thought. And while our brain executes these rules automatically, it is their conscious application an act of metacognition or awareness of one's own thinking that yields the most benefits. But here's the kicker. The entire field of systems thinking, all the methods and tools and frameworks of the first three waves are characterized by these different patterns of thought. So the first, fourth wave has some implications and I wanna just go over what they are. Uh, there's four of them in general. One is to the field of systems thinking itself. One is to science in general, or writ large. One is to just complex problem solving that we are all trying to do on lots of different problems. And the other is implications on public understanding, in particular in, in education. So let's start with the field itself of systems thinking. So remember that in the third wave, systems thinking had become a pluralism of methods that were in silos. And the fourth wave kind of breaks down these silos by uniting the field around common rules. 
bringing new hope that the universalism and the pluralism can kind of coexist. So we can have universality, but also a plurality of nothings um, under that universality. What this means is that whichever systems thinking tribe you hail from, whichever banner you carry, or whatever silo you are holed up in, you can enter the wider systems thinking community and collaborate. We are stronger together. The universal DSRP rules enhance these methods. They don't detract from these methods. So systems thinking is a bit like carpentry in that it requires deep understanding, but also a good set of tools. And using the tools without the deep understanding can be dangerous, like giving your three-year-old a chainsaw, right? But a powerful tool like network theory, for example, in the hands of a binary linear thinker isn't going to produce system thinking either. So as we all know, if we train a carpenter in a single tool, like a hammer, then they'll see a world of nails. So we want to train them in multiple methods and tools. DSRP provides a set of simple rules that develop deep understanding across systems and therefore leverage these systems thinking methods and tools. In short, whether you practice system dynamics, systems engineering, soft systems methodology, design thinking, critical systems thinking, or even Buddhist systems methodology, DSRP will help you use those tools better. The fourth wave also contributes to science in general it's fitting that we're here at Cornell, which is sometimes called the world's, uh, the, the first truly American university for its egalitarian approach to education. Ezra Cornell, our founder said, I would found an institution where any person could find instruction in any study. And this is truly a university with democratic and interdisciplinary ideals. As Nobel laureate and Cornellian for a while, Richard Feynman said, if our small minds, for some convenience, divide this glass of wine, this universe, into parts, so physics, biology, geology, astronomy, psychology, and so on, remember that nature does not know it. So let us put it all back together, not forgetting ultimately what it is for. These twin impulses, democratization, and interdisciplinarity in our efforts to understand the universe around us are the very roots of systems thinking. DSRP provides us with the universal cognitive grammar to transcend these disciplinary perspectives. And indeed today, one of the popular ways to innovate within a field in science is simply to apply a systems lens. The result can be seen in such far ranging and cutting edge fields as systems neuroscience systems engineering, systems evaluation, human, human ecology started with a systems thinking approach, and systems biology. The fourth wave emphasizes the influence of perspective in all of science. It has certainly been part of our human experience from the dawn of time that our observations of phenomena, including election polls, don't always turn out to be correct. Observer effects, as they're called, even in the classically objective physical sciences, are real. The observer, whether it's a human or an inanimate data collection device, often affects the observed. Across the physical, natural, social sciences, and even everyday experience, it is generally true that when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So returning to our VUCA world, the, worth, the fourth wave contributes to the hairball, which is the analysis of solving or wicked problems. I began by mentioning how this mismatch between the real world and how we think about the real world and understand it creates problems itself. It makes those problems even more intractable. And DSRP extends systems thinking's natural focus on mental models by showing us the universal architecture of those mental models. It makes us painfully aware of the fallacy that we can directly experience reality. Our cognition is biased, always. Having survived the most recent election cycle, we should all feel at a cellular level the critical importance of recognizing the pervasiveness of our cognitive biases and be motivated to deconstruct them.
Doing so will help us to understand and perhaps appreciate the positions of others, enabling constructive dialogue about our own wicked problems. BSRP also facilitates complex problem solving by providing a new logic, in a sense. A logic that transcends either or logic or binary, linear causal, or hierarchical explanatory frameworks to include an and both logic that is non-dual, multi-perspectival, and embraces webs of causality and systems of organization. So it's fundamentally changing the logic that underlies the way we think. In a simple sense, what DSRP does is make our thought patterns as complex and non-linear, yet structured and orderly as the real world. It's just a better match with reality. The final contribution of the fourth wave is in public understanding and education, which I've saved for last given its tremendous importance. Yes, significant change will be made by convincing stakeholders and policymakers, CEOs and community leaders, scientists and practitioners to take a systems thinking approach. But society transforming change will only occur when an entire generation of systems thinkers comes of age. We must ingrain in the public and our youngest learners an understanding of complex systems. It's therefore critical and important that the leaders of systems thinking as a field give them something tangible, something relevant, something accessible, but ultimately something scalable and sophisticated. Today's schools predominantly, not all of them, but predominantly, are training an entire generation of students to be good consumers of information. Good consumers of information. We need to train them to be great builders of knowledge. DSRP has a significant role to play in the inoculation of young people, in helping them structure information, and to question how others attempt to structure it for them. These are challenging times, both in terms of the problems we face, but also the context in which we must address them. While increasing numbers seek out systems thinking, far too many are being turned off by a deluge of confusing, needlessly complicated answers. This is both unfortunate and unnecessary because the underlying rules of systems thinking are quite simple. Their application will better position our scientists, practitioners, and leaders to tackle the many challenges ahead. And yes, DSRP unites the field of systems thinking and helps us advance as a discipline. But more importantly than that, the fourth wave and its simple rules enable systems thinking to escape the confines of the library and the lab to take its rightful place among the populace. Because now more than ever, our wicked problems require a nation and a world of systems thinkers. Thank you.